You can't fire him, he's black. Welcome to the Jason Rand Show presented by None Better Tax Resolution. Portland Public Schools dance teacher Damon Keller has a long history of reprimands from his school. This time he supposedly lied about being sick several times so he could go ahead and attend private lessons. And he was up for termination. This was a recommendation from the superintendent. They had just had it. In October 2022, Mr. Keller requested to take Wednesday afternoons off for eight weeks, starting in January, to perform work for his outside business. That request was denied because, under PPS policy and the collective bargaining agreement, there is no such leave available to take. However, Mr. Keller then proceeded to take sick leave for five of those Wednesdays, time when he was at Odyssey getting paid for doing work unrelated to his position at Ockley Green, for which he was also getting paid. Mr. Keller's explanation that both he and his family members just happened to be sick on Wednesday afternoons in January and February lacks credibility. While under investigation in that matter, Mr. Keller requested March 22nd to 26th off to judge a dance competition in North Carolina. Again, he was informed that there was no such leave available and the request was denied. Again, he called in sick for those days. When this matter was investigated, Mr. Keller claimed he really was sick, but recovered miraculously in time for a red-eye flight on Friday night to judge over the weekend. However, Mr. Keller was unable to produce an airline ticket for that flight, and an eyewitness contacted by the district confirmed that he was in North Carolina on Friday, March 24th. Again, Mr. Keller's explanation lacks credibility. Now, to his credit, school board member Andrew Scott, who you just saw, didn't hold back. The dance teacher is clearly an unserious person. And to fake another sick day while being investigated for faking sick days, that is the height of the audacity of privilege. It's something you do when you know you're not going to suffer any consequences. And he was right to assume that. Board member Michelle DePass voted against firing because Damon Keller just happens to be black. I want, I want to say something. Um, so I, I've quoted these statistics here before about um, who makes up our uh, education um, community. Um, education secretaries, 92% white. Superintendents, 93% white. Principals are 80% white. Teachers, 82% white. University professors, 81% white. School board members, 80% white. And students in our country, 46% white. And, and so I, I heard some of the testimony today and it really uh, made an impact on me because I think we do have a moral obligation to do what's, what we think is right. I, I know for a fact because I've worked for public agencies in, in this town for about 30 years that um, disciplinary action is disproportionately meted out by race. And I know that the outcomes are uh, disproportionate as well. For instance, scrutiny on black employees in our public institutions and private as well um, fall disproportionately on black people, sp specifically black men. Um, those outcomes, especially for public employees, impact your retirement and therefore um, em end up in the loss of black wealth. Um, I've seen it for 30 years um, with my own eyes. I've witnessed it and experienced it as well. I think uh, firing is too harsh of a pun punishment considering that we say even having a black janitor in a, in a building increases outcomes for uh, students of color. Um, we say that we need to hire more black teachers, and I think we have an opportunity to retain. Uh, we have an obligation to not just hire black teachers, but to also retain them and, and support them. Um, I just want to make sure I've, I've got the notes that I had, but, that, but that's it. I think that um, we have an obligation. I should say I have a personal obligation to do what I think is um, right, and so I'm going to be a no on this uh, tonight. DePass isn't merely just wrong. She's racist. She's a legitimately bad person. She has a personal obligation to protect him solely because of his skin color? Really? Because even black janitors improve outcomes for black students? Uh, okay. How utterly shameless. But then it gets worse. So the very first time um, Mr. Keller was written up was in 2016. So we've been watching him for a long time. We've been watching him and waiting for him to fail. And I've seen it over and over again, not necessarily with this case, but, but in general. The dance teacher has been written up multiple times. He's been investigated for various violations since 2016. And DePass claims we're watching him and we're waiting for him to fail. 
DePass is the worst kind of radical left activist. She has no standards for black professionals. That someone can be a horrible role model and break the rules and basically cheat the district out of taxpayer dollars and suffer no consequences purely because that person happens to be black, that shows you how little expectations you have for black professionals. That's racist. She's treating him and others as less than. Please lecture me about how calling out what amounts to a form of wage theft is white supremacy culture. In the end, with a four to three vote, the termination was rejected simply because he's black. If that's the bar for not punishing someone, let's at least be thankful he didn't sleep with a student or assault one. Jason Rance here with Greg Nunn, your local tax expert and advocate. Greg, thank you so much for coming on. Hey, Jason, great to be with you again and talk about these tax issues. Okay, so why should anyone in trouble with the IRS contact you immediately? The sooner the better because it's so much easier to deal with an IRS situation at the beginning than when you're getting toward the end and they're getting very aggressive. And at the same time, it takes that pressure off of you sooner and gives you that peace of mind that, hey, no more fear of going to the mailbox because I'm here helping you. So by connecting with you, can you assure people that they won't have the IRS on their doorstep or calling them nonstop? When you have representation, you definitely do not want to talk to the IRS ever, and you don't have to. You are protected by statute, by law, that when you have representation, they have to deal with your representative. And I am acting in your best interest when I'm dealing with the IRS. And I tell you, you don't want to talk to them. I'll just stress you out. Greg, thank you so much. That was really, really helpful. Hey, it's my pleasure. And I just really hope that what I've said helps some people that are in tax difficulty. If you're having trouble with the IRS, then call Greg Nunn. Greg might be able to negotiate a settlement for up to 85% off the original amount owed, including penalties and interest. Call Greg Nunn today. Did you like this video? We have a whole lot more over at KTTH.com.